podcast, where we sit down with global indigenous voices and hear how they're honoring the traditions of protecting the planet. Hey, Zuneba, how you been? Doing good. I'm Frank. How are you? I'm doing pretty good. I'm just uh, checking on you. I know you've been very busy uh, doing some really cool stuff that I don't want to like spoil right now. Um, but before we start, I was wondering, do you want to get us started with a mindful moment? So for the mindful moment for today that I was thinking about is related to traditional indigenous teachings. And one of these teachings that I practice every day since I was born is treating our animal and plant relatives with respect and also treating them equally. A lot of our traditional teachings say that you know, humans shouldn't be placed above plants or animals, that it should be the other way around, that we should be taking care of our plants and our animals, even if we don't quote unquote own them as pets. But this is something that you know, I was thinking about with the work that I'm doing, and I encourage everyone to, you know, be an animal and plant protector and do what you can to make sure that you know, all lives on this planet are, are in a good state. I totally agree. Have you ever seen that meme that says, like, I think one side says uh, eagle, and it has the human on top of all the animals, and then the other side says eagle, mm-hmm. and it has the human all around the, uh, the animals, you know? That kind of was makes me think yes. when you were uh, sharing your mindful moment. And I know mm-hmm. near your exactly. house, there's a, there's a bridge where you and your family were doing a cleanup and um, it's very close to your house. And recently um, there was a truck that went there and dropped some dogs off. Um, Can you tell me more about that story? Yeah, so unfortunately on May 1st, you know, this is something that my family has witnessed, you know, my entire lifetime and my parents' lifetime. And even before that is people know that our family rescues animals and that we love animals, that we advocate for animal rights and protection. So often stray animals get dumped off or abandoned near this bridge. And so on May 1st, there was two sisters, we named them Toka and Toru. They were not too young, but uh, they were just, again, this truck dumped them off by the bridge and then we saw it, the truck turned around and just left them there. So after that, you know, my family and I, we, of course, as usual, we give them food, give them water, make sure they're not sick or injured. And, you know, that's, this is always a discussion in our family is, do we have enough uh, resources or funding to take in more pets? You know, because people don't realize how expensive it is to have, you know, indoor and outdoor pets all the time. And right now we're up to um, six dogs and eight cats and plus many other animals that is that's pretty wild that you know people would just kind of drop and leave the dogs um you know me and my family we always you know when we want to get dogs we always uh adopt you know go to the shelters and get rescue dogs and for us is is a commitment you know you get a dog is is for the the life of the dog you take care of it and then one of our dogs magpie she uh ran away in a storm and she was out for four days and it was a big journey of us trying to find her in the train tracks. And I went to the uh, shelter to see if she was there. And when I was arriving at the shelter, I saw this family coming in and dropping off a dog. You can tell the dog was a little bit older to, to be on the pound, you know. And it just broke my heart mm-hmm. to see this dog because a dog was looking up at the family like, what are you guys doing? Like, I don't want to be here. And the family was just like, da, 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 da. like I'm just going to drop a dog here. And, you know, they kind of make a bond with, with us human. And it's, it's so sad to, to see that, that bond being broken, you know. And I can only imagine mm-hmm. these this dogs that are being dropped off, like, for generations in your uh, family house. And you, you guys taking the time to, to take care of them and feed them and, I really appreciate that. And you also mentioned that there's not a lot of resources going around. I mean, we're during a pandemic, you know, and I know your area is, is being hit very hard. And it just makes me like, I don't know, just wordless 
to know that you're taking care of all these animals, but um, you say that it's very expensive. Like, what, what are the costs involved by taking care of these animals? Expenses, you know, if you just want to get the basic needs for rescue animals, it's water, which we have tap water, food, so that could be wet food or dry food, and, you know, you can get a, a 13 pound bag for, you know, it's more than a dollar a pound, so they, dogs eat, having six dogs now, you know, they eat more than that much a day, so they're eating a lot. Um, and as, as environmentalists too, as part of our zero waste uh, movement, we give our slop, our dog slop, which is just leftover food that we don't finish. So we never have food waste. It goes to our dogs or we compost it. Um, and then also recently for these two pups, they're of course, majority of the animals that have been uh, abandoned near our home are females. And that's because it's so expensive to get um, female dogs and female cats spayed. And for what people do is instead of being responsible and trying to scrap up the funds to go get them fixed, they'll dump them off. And that's unfortunately what we see across our reservation. And, and again, this is an issue that's global. You see it around the world. That's why there's millions of homeless animals because people aren't taking that responsibility. So that's something my family and I, again, we've been doing my whole lifetime. I'm the oldest of all my siblings. And you know, this is something we're trying to battle is this, the issue of animal abuse and animal neglect. Uh, this is, again, when you take this responsibility, you know, what comes with it is paying for all these expenses. So in addition to you know, food and water, you make them shelter, you can buy them houses or beds. Uh, we got our two new pups, a dog pen, and it's a good sized dog pen, but it's about, it was about $450. And that was just for two dogs. So, you know, it's always been my dream as a, as a little girl. I've always wanted to have my own, um, you know, animal shelter, animal rescue. And now that I'm home, home um, after after college, I can finally focus on this. Um, and also, we did get one of our other female dogs spayed, and just for her alone, it was a little over two hundred and fifty dollars. So for the two sisters that we rescued, um, we're estimating it's going to be about five hundred dollars just to get them both spayed. And we do have same thing female cats that we want to get them fixed as well. And if we can ever get up to um, you know, saving up enough finances, we want to get the male um, dogs and cats fixed as well too, because there's also the issue of them getting um, neighbors and communities, other pets pregnant, and then, you know, there's there's conflict there, you know, who's going to take responsibility for the, the new kittens or puppies that come along. So that's, that's why we support um, spaying and neutering. It helps to reduce the population of homeless animals. And then again, that goes back to um, you know what I shared in the mindful moment of respecting our animal relatives. <clears throat> um, you know what we say a lot of people we treat our animals as family, and for our indigenous teachings, you know animals are sacred beings, and so that's why um, you know animals are very precious and close to my to my heart, and that's why uh, this is something that I'm I'm dedicated to. Yeah, it's, it's a beautiful cause to uh, to follow, and uh, thank you once again for you and your family for doing this work. And you're mentioning about the uh, you know spading and ordering. I mean, that's it's such a big thing because it really you know like if you don't if you have a cat that is a outdoor cat, and if you if you don't get the cat fixed, like they have shown like the the numbers down in the years of how many cats that it's gonna have, you know. And you know, whenever we adopt, you know, exactly. we go ahead and we fix it. And you know, a lot of people, you know, they're inside their house now uh, with uh, the virus, and they're getting to burden. It's like a movement; it's a phenomenon mm -hmm. of people getting to burden, and they're, you know, they're they're seeing more birds around. You know, even my family, we kind of put birders or I mean, bird feeders around the windows. But you know, the wildcats they kill millions and millions of of wild birds. Uh, every year, you know, 
and we really need to get them uh, fixed mm -hmm. and so that way our bird population can can come up you know and it's is that one action that somebody has of just dropping a, a cat in the wild and that cat reproducing and it's just it it's crazy how in the end you know how much impact one single action has and you kind of mentioned it that you have doing this for, you know, since you're a little girl, you always think about taking care of the animals and then your family has done this previously. But now it seems that you're making it more like an official thing. I kind of saw that you're putting some stuff together. Can you tell us more about it, like the, the project you have going on? You know, I want to show people that you don't have to have a, an exact sh uh, business. You don't have to have a an official organization or an official location to rescue animals that are have been abandoned or that are strays my family like i've been saying ever since i was in my in the womb we've been taking in rescue animals just as a family paying out of pocket and this is something i hope to inspire you know other families and other communities to do as well and this is again something that um, I'm very passionate about. And right now, I don't think many people even realize that this COVID-19 pandemic is also negatively affecting animals as well as our, as our human relatives. And so uh, these, just a few days ago, I finally decided to, you know, go public more on our social media with my family. So we created our family's animal rescue called Animal Protectors. And we use the hashtags Animal Protectors and hashtag Animals Are Sacred. So you can find us on Facebook right now. And pretty much what I've been doing for the, ever since we created it on the 21st of this month is we're sharing pictures of all of our rescue animals. We're sharing all the information and data of you know, what expenses that we need to get covered for these animals. We're planning for uh, getting future rescue animals. Uh, we just got two new kittens yesterday. So, you know, we're planning long term that we want to get them fixed, spayed, or neutered. We want to get their vaccinations. Uh, you know, rabies is a big one. And here on the reservation, we have a tick infestation. So we want to also invest in the proper flea and tick medicine. We have elderly pets that we want to also update their medications on. So there's a, there's a lot that, um, I, like I said, if you don't own pets, um, you know, it, it can be costly. So we have been asking for donations. And as of today, um, from six donators, we've got $250. And so again, just a little over $250 gets one female dog spayed. So just imagine, you know, having six dogs and eight cats and then more coming along in the future. You know, that's that's something we're trying to plan long term for. Yeah, and I saw that, you know, for every, you know, purchase that you make uh, or any vet um, visit that you do, you post like a receipt, you know, so that's a pretty cool uh, way to really show that, you know, the donation is going straight to the animals. And uh, I feel like, you know, more people should be able to uh, support you. And we're gonna put the links on the description, but can you just remind us uh, where to find you on online? So right now we're on Facebook page. You just can search animal protectors. We also have our Venmo account and same thing. You can search animal protectors and then for, a lot of our, our people that support us say they're old school and they don't use technology like we do. So they have said they, they want to mail stuff in. So we've been sharing our home uh, mailing address, which is P.O. Box 3360, Gallup, G-A-L-L-U-P, New Mexico, 87305. And in addition to monetary donations we've been receiving, we've also been receiving, you know, pet supplies, pet food. And it, it's helped so much. Everything that we get, you know, we, we greatly appreciate all the rescue animals. I know they love it. They appreciate it. And that's just, again, um, you know, we don't have to get, you know, monetary or supplies donations, just, you know, support. 
or just you know tell people as well hey we need to protect our animal relatives what can we do what changes can we make um so that's that's also something is that just i'm really grateful to you know my family and my partner for supporting me because i am taking the lead on this but again i really just appreciate everyone this far who is, is supporting us yeah it's such a great cause in seeing the pictures of the dogs that um, your family uh, rescue you know they look so happy now and uh, those animals are you know like you said they're they're spiritual beings you know they are beautiful creatures that we need to take care of I sometimes I think you know about we depend so much on nature you know of the animals that we have to hunt to eat and then the animals that we had to hunt to clothe us, you know, and animals were essential for our survival. But now things kind of have flipped. The animals feel that we are making their survive, you know. So for so long, we were depending mm -hmm. on those animals to survive. Now those animals are depending on us to survive. And we took so much of them, we killed so many animals to eat. You know, we destroyed so many of their um, places where they were living so we can survive. Now it's our turn to make sure that they have the space to survive, you know, because we are able to, to live without harming the animals. We, we don't need to eat animals if we don't want to, it's a choice, right? There's plenty of options. So it's really up to us to to help the uh, the animals in any way we can. And you know, you're you're mentioning like you know donations of dog food are great, and I think a lot of us have like accounts online where you can order things and send it to a different address. So that's like a great idea. Mm -hmm. just, you know, next time you're shopping online, you know, put a bag of like dog food and just send it to the animal protectors. You know. Yeah, and that's something too. I've I've witnessed that it's it's a lot harder for you know people living and animals living in rural areas, you know, like tribal reservations where we don't have street addresses. And for us, the closest pet store is in a border town over two hours away. And so you know we're just relying on grocery stores that offer whatever pet supplies exist there. And um, you know. This month is Mental Health Awareness Month. And so, you know, I think animals are also important to, you know, our health as human beings. Uh, you know, there's official emotional support animals. And, you know, I, I have one, my cat that I had with me throughout college. But I think, again, going back to how all animals are sacred, you know, all animals are emotional support animals. They provide that comfort to humans. You know, that's why there's so many pet lovers that exist. And so I think, you know, I'm combining the work I do with, you know, advocating for animals with the work I do for the environment because, you know, when we keep the animals, um, we want to keep them safe, we want to keep them healthy. That means we're going to have to keep the environment healthy as well because they depend on the environment to survive too, not just humans. And I like what you said about you know, there's a choice now that uh, we don't have to continue consuming animals or animal byproducts. That's something I've, I've done. You know, I quit drinking cow milk and dairy years ago back in high school because, you know, I visited the dairy, a dairy industry farm and they're not doing it, um, you know, humanely. It's very inhumane. I've cut down on meat. Um, so this is stuff I've also been advocating for my whole life that, um, not just pets, but, you know, animals in general. How do we protect them? How do we, again, do stuff in a responsible and respectful way if we are going to continue to do that? And so that's just something um, I thought of as well. And if you were able to speak to all the lost dogs and all the lost cats in the world and just give them a message, uh, let's say they, whatever you say telepathically, they'll be able to hear it and understand, like, what would be your message for those lost dogs and lost cats? Yeah, I think first off, you know, I would want to just, you know, apologize. I can't, I couldn't ever imagine 
abandoning a, an animal, you know, their family, their relative, and you know, the so my first thing is just to apologize for all the suffering, um, all the negativity, the cruelty that they're facing. I just would want to, you know, let them know that not every human being um, is cruel to animals, that there are humans that are dedicated to making sure they can protect as many animals as possible. So, you know, to all, all our stray and homeless and abandoned animals, you know, I just want to let them know that, you know, they're loved. They're not all forgotten. There's, again, there's humans that are going to continue to fight for them. That's a beautiful message. And uh, before we wrap up here, we always like to give our listeners a little bit of a homework. One thing they can do from home to help the planet. And what would, what would it be for uh, today's episode? Yeah, for today's episode, you know, I just want to ask, you know, all our, our listeners and the supporters to, you know, when COVID-19 passes and when all the animal shelters and services reopen for business that, you know, they continue to support them. And, you know, even with um, humane societies, if you can't, you know, contribute money, contribute your time and your, your work, you can volunteer and, you know, walk dogs, you can, you know, give them attention, give them love, you know, that's, that's the basic thing that these, you know, animals, rescue animals are yearning for. And so, you know, I, I encourage everyone to do that once the COVID-19 passes. And just for now, you know, the families that are still rescuing animals during the pandemic, you know, continue to support us. And if you can, and if you have the resources to, do the same thing, start the same rescues in your own homes, in your own communities. And um, yeah, we'd greatly appreciate everyone's support and, and donations. Everything means so much to us. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, over this weekend, uh, my friends, Javier and Veronica, they encounter a turtle that got run over. And somebody you know they were not the ones that found it somebody found it and told them hey you know you should take care of this turtle and that person kind of like ditched them so they took the turtle that was hurt uh, they took it home and tried to clean it a little bit and give it water and food and you know trying to reach out to places that would take care of the turtle and i, I put a post on instagram does anybody know where to take a turtle and it was kind of interesting because a lot of people we're mentioning the same kind of person. And this is, you know, individual that just does, you know, turtle rescues. And I feel like, you know, that could be the same thing for like a raccoon. There's probably a person who just focused on taking care of raccoon or cats or dogs. And these people, you know, they're doing this from the bottom of their heart, you know, and they're again known in their community for being that protector of that animal. And, you know, we should support those people because they are doing everything they can to make a lot of suffering of the animals. And if you're not able to find those people in your own community, I recommend to check out the animal protectors because they are doing an amazing job. Uh, I'll post the links uh, on the uh, description below. Because, you know, it's, it's part of us as environmentalists to take care of the animals around us. Exactly. Yeah. And I would just encourage everyone, you know, join us and be an animal protector. You know, that's, that's what it means when we talk about honoring Mother Earth. That includes our plant relatives and again, our animal relatives. Beautiful. Thank you so much for uh, updating us on what you're up to. And I hope that, you know, more people that are listening to this will help you on your uh, mission. Thank you. Awesome. Bye -bye. Thank you so much.